Hello and welcome back to yet another episode of Make It A Double Double. This week we have got the biggest distance between guests and ourselves because all the way from Australia we have got the duo from So Rare Down Under, Simon and Alistair, on a fresh Australian morning. How are we boys? Very well, very well. No better uh, way to start a day than a podcast. So, um, yeah, we'll just strap in. <laughs> exactly that. It's the Alistair, future. How are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. It's the future here. Um, it's there's big, big shit happening over here in the future. You guys are gonna love it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's um, for all the way from the future. Why don't you open up the Soul Rare Saloon a bit earlier than normal and tell us what drinks you've you've ordered for us this week. Yeah, well, I think we better start with the alcoholic beverage. Um, you know, it might be 7 a.m. here in Australia, but, you know, no better way to kick off your day than with some some cast wine. So the brief we gave you boys was, I think, get your cheapest cask of wine. Um, the cheapest. And, you know, while it, it, while it might be 7 o'clock, it's socially acceptable in Australia, especially, to drink our wine. So have you boys put, purchased your uh, your goods? Mark's, Mark's okay. got his box of wine. Now, our, now who, who's got the cheapest? I'd like to know who's got the cheapest cask here. Well, I've so, got a bit of a weird story with mine. So oh, mine, here we I, go. mine is a bit of a cop out. I'll hold my hands up. I might have slightly copped out. I have got wine. It's not in a box. It's a bottle. But when we're going about value, let me talk to you about value. So <laughs> this, this, this bottle of wine came with Two main meals, two sides, two desserts for nine pound ninety nine. So if you work out the value of that wine, oh, okay, that is a that's, very cheap bottle of wine. Pretty bad. That's pretty bad. It's yeah. a really I will, cheap wine. I will say the least you could have done though is like duct taped it to the inside of a cardboard box, <laughs> oh, that'd have been a good idea. and then poured it from the box. I think that you would have been. You brought a bottle of wine as well. You could have told <laughs> yeah. me this beforehand, and I yes. could have it. Yeah, it's proper so, to sit you up because you told us this yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> so I went to uh, Tesco to get mine, and the cheapest one I could find was 15 quid, which I thought that oh, seems a bit premium considering you guys said the cheapest bottle of wine. Yeah, so then I went that's to like Al- 120 Australian dollars. <laughs> yeah, so then I, <laughs> I, also, I also thought there's no way I'm drinking more than a glass or two of this during this podcast, and it's going straight in the bin. So... Um, I then went to Aldi and I managed to get this little beauty, uh, Grove Manor, it's called, for £6.50. Oh, well done. A, well done. That is, that is cheap. What about now, you, boys? How much are yours? I mean, well, so mine... the, the conversion, I don't know if you're up on your conversions, but it's about, it's just under two Aussie dollars to a pound. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Okay. Well, I think mine's probably sitting at coming in at around five to six pounds. It's not too bad. I was looking for cheaper. I was hoping for the nasty, you know, I asked them if they had any nastier cask wines, and they said, this is the worst we've got. So, <laughs> well, I actually got mine from the garage of a friend's place. So, this probably hasn't seen the daylight in about two years. Probably not even in date. I don't know if wine can go off, but um, yeah, we have so a winner. if I do get food poisoning, fall ill, then we know why. So that is a really rough way to start your day, yeah. then. But it would be really completely hoping, worth it. I'm really okay, hoping so that the soft drink isn't. <laughs> Before the same. we get onto the soft drink, so the reason we've chosen the cask wine, so there is a bit of a, a story, a reason to this. So you mentioned that you, you know, oh, I'm not going to drink a few cups of this. You won't be needing cups. Where we're going, we don't need cups. So in Australia, this is a goon sack. So take your cask. Fuck it off. This is your goon sack now. Now, there's many different uses for this, but the best way to go about it really is just straight straight down the gullet. Straight in. Straight in. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to just have to drink from the bottle then, aren't I? Well, I yeah, you're going to just have to that. drink from the bottle. <laughs> now, Ooh, the a see-through the- bag. Ooh. That looks like a colostomy bag. See through is so much worse. Why is see through so much worse? (laughs) You brought a genuine bag of piss. It tastes like fucking piss. I'll tell you that. (laughs) That's the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. (laughs) Now, the beauty of the goon bag, the beauty of the goon bag is it's got many functions. Now, at any. Um, any proper establishment of a, of a college around Australia, 
Now, these are obviously very popular with uni students, um, of which I was one for, for the past couple of years. You know, great value. You drink a whole goon bag and you, you're charging, right? But, you know, to, to sort of spice things up, we, you know, we, we do goon layback. So you got to lie on the ground. Someone pours it in until basically you're almost drowning slash can't take any more. Or you can do goon of fortune and you put it on a clothesline. <laughs> And you spin it around, <laughs> and wherever the goon bag stops, you got to drink from the, the clothesline. It's uh, Australia's a great country. The funniest thing about this is we have such a different meaning for the word goon in the, in the <laughs> yeah. UK. So goon just means some like sad little nerd, pretty much in this country. So yeah, you calling like it a goon bag person. just sounds yeah. so strange. It makes you feel pretty sad. Oh, so I think that I works think, out. I think it's quite easy to say that in yeah. terms of like an obsession with binge drinking. Australia has to be the closest to England in yeah. terms of like just an obsession with it doesn't matter yep. what time it is it doesn't matter how cheap it is just get it down you get pissed 100% and yep. it, yeah <laughs> what I a country just, sorry just quickly i realized that like i said i i didn't see what i was getting i just got it from a friend's place i've actually got red wine i didn't know that oh. that came in oh. <laughs> so it's like 7 a.m. and i'm sculling red wine before going to work so Today could be interesting. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Now, I mean, last, easily, last feature of the goon bag, <laughs> before we move on to right non-alcoholic. <laughs> so the last fe- feature of the goon bag, it's a multifaceted thing. I mean, apart from having to carry it around like this for the entire party, at the end of the night, once you've finished your bag of piss, you can blow it up and then bang, get yourself a little pillow <laughs> set for the night. <laughs> We're, we're an oh. in, ingenious, Ingen- in, ingenious bunch ingenious? of blokes yeah. down here. Ingenious, there we that's go. A, got there that's, ironic. that's ironic, oh. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Easily my most favourite drink so far. I don't care what it tastes like. I don't care that it tastes like shit. It's fun. I'm now Get some people going. Adam needs to pour his into a carrier bag. I know, yeah. Do I, have, I, have I got some? I'm trying to like, look around my room. See if Put I've it in got, a bag for life or like something. A... Just cut the corner of the bag out. I'm trying to think of like if I can MacGyver away into a goon bag, but I don't know if I can. Oh, I what, so what have you got, Adam, a drink then? Yeah, whilst he tries figuring out what bag he can put it into. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I think, well, I've actually, I've kind of botched mine. Uh, they didn't have the original drink, but basically we've asked for you boys to find some Bundaberg ginger beer. Did you have any luck? I've Mine's pink. <laughs> Oh, mine's, mine's not, the wrong color. It definitely says no. Bundaberg Ginger Beer, Australian family owned. So that's the one. Yeah. So, deal. so a couple of fun facts with this one. So Simon and I are actually from the town of Bundaberg, where this is made. Um, oh. Strong. And so, but it's not really famous for the like. It is famous for the ginger beer, but it's more famous for its rum. Bundaberg's very famous for rum, and being the most obese town in Australia, and like domestic violence. It's a fun town. <laughs> so we thought, we thought we'd bring a little taste of that to you guys. It's actually all quite delicious as well. Um, so, yeah, Bundaberg ginger beer. A little so rare fun fact to throw in there as well. Um, we tried, I was trying to figure out how we could connect so rare to Bundaberg. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of the J-League keeper, Langerak. Do we know Langerak? Yeah, Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he went Before to my school in Bundaberg. Bundaberg. <laughs> Nice, good. No yeah, there's a good yeah. fact for everybody. There oh, we go. So it's all right. Podcast for a minute, to be honest. Yeah, so did I, to be honest. <laughs> right. So there you go, I, back. as I if didn't we've realize... ever been a proper so rare podcast. Let's face it, yeah. and we we never will be. Um, I didn't realize there was a difference between ginger beer and root beer. So you're actually not the first guests to ask for a ginger uh, Bundaberg ginger beer. Mm. I went to get one, got a root beer by accident, and text these boys. Is there a difference? Um, so I thought, you know what, in honour, I'll, I'll drink that earlier. So I had the root beer. Uh, that is the most rancid drink I've ever put in my mouth. It was <laughs> awful. It made me feel like I was drinking medicine and not the kind that you enjoy as a kid. So I'm I'm praying that this is better. So Adam, you know you're complaining to a bunch of blokes that just took swigs out of big giant yes. bags of wine? I am. I am. I was... <laughs> It was like I mean, you were transparent. Oh, sorry was for you. Yeah. yeah, I became aware of that as um, I started saying it, to be honest. So I just uh, gave up halfway through. Let's, like, it's quite cheers, normal. Boys. 
Oh yeah, cheers, gents. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> <laughs> get over your bag of piss. Okay, what? yeah, the ginger. Okay, the ginger beer's all right. Oh my, honestly, that. <laughs> that must, that's, it must put you off the fact it looks like you've got that off someone in hospital and just started drinking yeah, that's it. Weird. I mean, mm. one thing I will say about this person is their piss is like ha- at least half decent hydrated. Well, yeah, really yeah, good yeah. hydrated. Yeah, yeah it's, that's not a morning piss. That's like a it's like an afternoon piss. That in it. No, that's good. I'll be happy if mine yeah. looks like that after a day in hospital. To be honest, <laughs> more than happy. But we have said that we are um, ever so slightly a so rare podcast. So we'll we'll throw it over to you boys in the same way we always do, um, and ask you your so rare stories and how you got into so rare. But before we do that, as we know, so we you've mentioned that you come from the future, and we had a little bit of a mishap yesterday. So we were actually supposed to record this yesterday, and Mark, I think you've prepared a little something. Yeah. So. I felt really bad about messing up yesterday because, you know, one thing I do, I hate doing is wasting people's time. And uh, I don't know if this is a thing um, in Australia, but it was a big thing in the UK back in the day. Whenever you played FIFA with your friends, if they fucked up or they didn't turn up and you completely turned them over, your friend had to write you an official letter of apology so what I've what I've done is I have written you boys an official letter of apology, which I'll oh. uh, read to you now, if I may. And I hope that this letter of apology will help you guys forgive me, forgive the make it a double double. You know, it wasn't down to these boys; it's purely down to me for the mess up. So um, yeah, here we go. You ready for it? I'm ready. Fire away. Okay. So, dear so rare down under. I must sincerely apologise for my slight mishap in the organisation of our Make It A Double Double Cross So Rare Down Under podcast episode. As an Englishman, I have grown up in a society that expects the whole world to bend over backwards for us. From the expectations that the world's population should learn and speak our language, to basing the world's clocks and time zones around the Greenwich Mean Time, Nevertheless, as the make it a double double head of bookings, I should have realised that you guys living down under are in fact in the future. And setting a date time to record on the 21st of Feb at 7am AEST would in fact be the 20th of Feb in little old Blighty. (laughs) I was always taught the value of punctuality and respect by my parents, who I feel I've let down in this instance. However, I hope that the mishap did not cause you too much inconvenience. And again, I sincerely apologise. Yours, Mark. Oh, wow. That was beautiful, Mark. I mean, I did lose my job because I was late to work. So, um, (laughs) but the apology makes it feel so much better. So thank you. Well, the thing thing is, he he did this apology, but this is all for sure. Because in the group chat, he sent us a really crude voice note with like a terrible australian accent and he said fuck those bloody blodgers and i i thought that was really rude like considering yeah. it was his fault so i'm glad no, you got your letter of apology yeah. <laughs> yeah we thought it might just be like a real power move to just assert some authority on us you know put us on the back foot mm. um, <laughs> yeah we got a text at 10 past nine last night saying boys i might have fucked up <laughs> it, was, it was more that he expected us to just be ready to jump on right there. Yeah, hundred percent. I, like, I was not near any yeah. form of laptop mic or anything like that. He was like, "Are you boys available to record?" I'm like, "No, mate. I'm going to bed in like half an hour." Like, what do you mean? I haven't got my bag of piss. Yeah. But all apologies out of the way. We're all here today. So tell me both. How did you get into so rare? Like. How did you find it originally? Where did you end up? Um, well, I got into Saref first, so I'll start, I guess. Um, I was kind of—I'm a bit of a basic bitch. I basically joined during the Gary V boom, um, so I can't really even claim to be unique or like forward thinking. I was just kind of joining the herd with everyone else, um, buying cards <laughs> for just the most ridiculous prices um, that we've ever seen. So. I kind of got in 
that way relatively early, I guess, in the grand scheme of things. Um, and then basically I gave Simon a call because I had bought my first five cards at auction and I'd received my referral reward, which back then was a rare card. And remember, rares were like yeah. thousands of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So my, my referral reward was a Augustine Marcheson, Marcuson, um Ooh, rare player. who he was at the time he was the porto goalkeeper so yeah. he was worth about 1500 bucks um so i basically called simon and said this is the easiest money you'll ever make in your life <laughs> 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 nothing can go wrong you'll never <laughs> you'll never quit this platform in a haze of tears in a couple of years time because you've lost all your money everything's going to be great <laughs> Yeah, um, and as someone that was, you know, buying goon bags on the daily, I thought, well, think of how many goon bags I can buy with the fifteen hundred dollar referral reward. <laughs> um, so in I came, bought my cards, uh, only the for me to get, um, you know, the infamous Burak Yilmaz. Uh, I think he was like thirty seven years old, Turkish, yeah. like wasn't playing. Is that what I was, was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was at Lille. They, he, they clocked onto it. Now, yeah, between me signing up and Simon signing up, they clocked onto the fact that they shouldn't be just giving away fifteen hundred dollar cards. Um, they were like, "Here's a thirty five dollar card." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, even then, that's actually quite good. I'm pretty sure mine was about sixty eight p. Like, yeah, yeah, mine was um, less than a quid. Mine was when we'd come back down to limited cards as your yeah um, mm. your referral reward, and mine was worth um, eighty nine pence. Unlucky. So is that why you is that why you live so far away from each other right now? Because Simon just went fuck you, Alistair. <laughs> I'm moving to the other side of the country or wherever it is. Yeah, he had to file for bankruptcy, so they just sent him to Melbourne to live in a slum. <laughs> Family Christmas is so awkward. It's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so how did um, how did so Rare Down Under come about? Obviously, the the name in itself is a a giveaway, but. Obviously, you guys make your own content. We all, I mean, everybody loves the videos. We all know the Simon leaving so rare. What is that world like? I absolutely <laughs> pissed myself watching that video. But how did, like, where did the idea come for you guys to do that and start making stuff like that? So it was actually kind of interesting because it was, it initially started for a uni project. So I was doing a uni assignment and I think hit Alistair up to do this, like, mock so rare podcast interview kind of thing. And then I think from there, we were like, we like Sarah. We think we could make content. We think we're quite funny, even though we're not. Um, and we actually started off with a Champ America podcast. So we were like, we like the MLS. Let's purely focus on the MLS. Uh, and then after probably about eight weeks of realizing that, hmm, MLS, it really isn't that great. Um, there's not a whole lot to talk about it. Um, we pivoted into the Sarah and other podcasts. And here we are a couple of months later. Nice, nice, strong. Is that how long? Now, is that all it's been? A couple of months. It's been longer than I that. Been, I, I, was, I thought you'd been yeah. around for longer than that. Yeah, I think so. We're maybe, we're, we're recording episode like fifty thing, this week, so that's that's fifty weeks at least. So oh, I think wow. it's and we're never every year. Yeah, it's just nearly a year. We're, yeah. we're never on time with the podcast, so that's probably at least a year and a half, actually. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a question for you both. I mean, I'm obsessed with this like bottle cap, by the way. I don't know why. It's a weird. Mm. The worst thing oh, with that is that when you pull it and the ring doesn't come off, like the cap doesn't come off yeah. and the ring breaks, and then you just I was you, worried you're that fucked, that was basically. Yeah. Mm. And then I didn't realize that I had to pull it back, and when I did pull it back, it's just splashed all over me. <laughs> um, need to be more prepared next time. Now, I we've talked a little bit before about FIFA and things like that, but before I get into the question, because there might not be any point asking you, how much do you guys follow the A League? <laughs> Surprisingly little. Um, <laughs> I know that we uh, we're constantly this campaigning for this. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, fun fact about us is that prior to doing this podcast, prior to finding Sarah, neither of us really had any involvement with football at all. Um, yeah, I follow I follow the Spurs kind of casually. Um, I've, I watched a bit of like watched the Socceroos when they play at the World Cup, but. Fair enough. No real interest. Not in, no, there was always an interest, but I didn't certainly didn't follow it anywhere near to the level I do now. 
Um, and then Sorrera has basically opened us up to all these different leagues and different teams. And we kind of, you know, we made a joke a couple of weeks ago on the pod that like, I think we know the most about the Belgian league of anyone in Australia. Um, <laughs> so I think really our plea to Sorrera to onboard the A-League is just so we can get to know the A-League a little better because we're not just going to watch it for <laughs> the sake of watching it. Like <laughs> we need some skin in the game. I mean, have you seen the A-League? It's awful. So <laughs> yeah, so, we don't know too much. Uh... I remember back in the day, I can't even remember which FIFA it was, but there was a YouTuber who used to do like a, a Bronze Beast series. So they were like shit cards in the game, but actually they was they were sick. And I remember I had a full team of A-League players and I was hoping that I could ask you how good they actually were in real life. But it turns out you might not even know who half of them are. But it did lead to an, obs- I would say borderline obsession with a football player called Bernie Ibiniese, who Simon's face is telling me all I need to know there. Um, he played for the Central Coast Mariners. Oh, yeah. um, and I followed his career. I followed his career for years. He very briefly came over to the MLS and played for the Vancouver Whitecaps. And I was like, here we go. This is it. He's about to blow up. <laughs> um, his last club was in <laughs> Singapore and he's not got a club anymore. Um, so he fell off. But there were players like uh, Luke Breton, who he briefly went to Man City. No? Mate, you're talking a different language at the moment. Aaron, Aaron, you know which one I'm about to say next, though? Oh, Aaron Moy, obviously. Aaron Moy. Yeah. Aaron, Aaron Moy. Yep, Everybody there we go. Wants. We got one. Yeah, we know we all one. about that's, the A-League. That's what I wanted. That's not because he's Australian, though. That's because <laughs> yeah. he's a Huddersfield Town legend. He's got nothing to do yeah. with his nationality. He's, a, he's like John Joe Shelby on crack. That's oh, mm. it's what everybody yeah. wants. Mate, he's yeah, John Voldemort. Joe every drug you can take in life, I think. He's not just crack. He's just meant more because he was best, bold and it was a... The best centre mid you'll ever come across. It was just a silly comparison, pal. He's John Joe Shelby <laughs> after a lifetime of goon bags. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly... Just a couple of weeks Mark, of goon bags. A, Mark, <laughs> as, a, um, as a posh man who has duck for tea on his own on a Wednesday, um, yeah. where does... Drinking wine out of a bag on your own after calling it a goon bag rate in terms of like law points for you. Why did you have to specify he's on his own? You didn't need to rub that in that he's in the house on his own. <laughs> did you want to turn this into a therapy session or we just... it was more just it was more just to highlight the bouginess of, of cooking just yourself. Like a, a duck dinner. I wasn't. We've been, <laughs> we've 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 been through this, mate. Duck was on offer at the time. It was. It's not a weekly thing. It's not a regular occurrence, right? I, I'm, I don't know. I'm, because... I'm more. I'm more than happy with with the goon bags, mate. You say that, but the week before, I watched you eat duck at Anfield. So you've all, you've also whipped up cream for podcasts. You've made absolutely. You've done Very all true. this. Now you're drinking piss out of a bag. So surely yeah, you've got to realise that this isn't as serious decline. Yeah. Your etiquette. I tell you what. I tell you, you what. If, that, if, the other, if, the, if the fellas in the House of Lords see me, if, see, if they see this video, they're going to be furious. <laughs> <laughs> you might. You that might see it. Boys. <laughs> I, I just I just see it as adhering to our guest wishes. True, you are very committed. Yeah, you, you are. Very I mean, apart from the, I feel like we've all copped out a couple of times. Every time it comes on screen, it throws me off. <laughs> Every single time I just watch you carry a bag from off screen and drink <laughs> from it, it throws me off. But I tell you what, the the big thing for us to talk about today, I'm interested to see if you boys did it, because obviously the Gary V boom joined quite early. Did we all get free money? Mm. Sure did. Yeah. Absolutely. Money. Yeah. I aged about 90 years trying to fucking process it because it was the most ridiculous thing this I've is, ever done. Yeah. If ever you needed proof that not a single one of us has a fucking clue what's going on with crypto, this this is that proof. Did you see so, Laird's tweet? Yeah. I don't think so. Laird did a tweet that said something like, if you ever need a proof that Sora is not about NFTs, you've got the entire platform <laughs> panicking about sending crypto from one website to another. Like, <laughs> he's not an NFT platform. So, we all struggled. Um, I completely fucked up and almost nearly didn't get myself any money. So, I, <laughs> I literally have, like, a Coinbase account and my Sora account. That's all I've ever had. The second they brought the fiat in and you could de- deposit on your card, I've never touched crypto again. So I got it 
I managed to convert it into ETH. I've done really well. I've sent it to my trust wallet. Then when I've gone on my trust wallet, it's not showing up. And I'm like, this doesn't make sense. Um, turns out I'd sent it on the wrong network, which then didn't recognize the GCC, ETH because it was... It? Yeah, the, the yeah. Q, Q coin, is it? Um, because I'm a cheap bastard and the fees were significantly less than anything else. And they don't then, have to pay to get it back. Yeah. Um, the the problem is the only way I could get it back is by using QCoin as the gas fees. Um, Trust Wallet didn't recognise QCoin, so I had to I, I had to add it manually as a token. Didn't know that was a thing. Um, buy QCoin, of which you could only buy a minimum of ten pounds. Um, which I did it in Australian dollars because the conversion rate was better, so I had to spend less. Um, so there's a little connection between us there. Um, send that to my trust wallet to then fund the gas fees to send it back to my QCoin. Sent all the QCoin back, converted everything, finally sent it. It took me eight hours. Crypto Amazing. is the future. Eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> How are the poor bastards in El Salvador going right now? Bitcoin is their <laughs> national currency. You like? I have got a friend. <laughs> I have got a friend in El Salvador. So I have got a friend in El Salvador who said that their president, who's yeah, basically turned them into a crypto country, is a fucking moron. Um, <laughs> hey, you say that. And you see, in the chat, surprisingly, mate, Bitcoin is rising. He's probably earning a fucking shit ton right now. Yeah, he is. Nobody else is. Um, oh, yeah. Things surprisingly are going terribly. Um, but yeah, I I never thought I'd be able to tell you about my friend Carlos Colacho in El Salvador. He's like a Carlos. Big, big shout No, oh, that's Luca Colliosho. You're that's doing it, spells yeah, again. Yeah, that's yeah. racist. You that's also racist. started off that segment saying how you didn't have a fucking Scooby how to do crypto or anything, and then you went into a whole three minute like description <laughs> of how you transfer from one wallet to another to the next wallet, and then this was uh, your trust wallet or whatever the fuck that is. I'll be very honest. The vast majority of that is thanks to Atri, um, former oh, guest yeah. on the podcast, because he is the one person in our forty man group chat that actually knows what the fuck he's talking about. So, God well, bless that boy. That process but, today, I had one of my mates, I'll, I'll shout out Ash Johnson, because oh, he God. always wants to come on this podcast, <laughs> and he's not been on yet. But he decided that, you know the people... <laughs> just I, just, so I know bad. what's coming, I know yeah. what's coming. There was like them things on Twitter where it was like, oh, follow these rules and you'll get your crypto, and if you just follow these steps... And there was one of the steps that asked you if you wanted to convert your co- uh, start coin to V Stark, so you could delegate it in votes to like people at Stark. Yeah, like network. who had projects yeah. going on who and stuff like that. Going on. Yeah, you can basically donate your Stark to these people. And he sent me. He, I was like, just ask me because I'd already done it by this point. I was like, ask me any question. Just say, let me double check everything, and you'll be sound. I get a photo out of nowhere. Why have I only got 20 coins? I should have 111 coins. And I was like, I don't know. I haven't fucking done it. So he sent me a photo. And on the voting screen, rather than pressing skip, he decided to press 100% of delegating his stack to some random fucking guy's project. So in, in his defense, when I went to do that originally, you couldn't see the skip button. Yeah, you had yeah, to yeah. scroll down, so you oh, had two could. options. Oh, yeah, well, that's stupid. Because I saw that I had two options. I had delegate to these randomers or delegate to myself. And for a second, I was like, duh, delegate to myself. I want the money. Yeah. Went, did the 100%, went to it, and then a big fucking red message popped up. And I was like, I don't know what that means. Reject. Cancelled it immediately and waited. <laughs> Thank fuck I did. The photo <laughs> Showed him on a hundred percent, and then the skip button in big fucking blue letters underneath <laughs> just, it. Just because you and sent us the picture, didn't you? Yeah, instead of pressing it, skip, look at this. it's just gone. Yeah, I'll delegate all my two hundred dollars to this random geezer doing a Stark project <laughs> that I've never heard of in my life. So then he I spent the next hour picture. figuring out how to convert it back, and all. Yeah, it, uh, it literally. I, I get people's issue. It's fucking hard, but mm. you don't just delegate your money to a random geezer. I know, I know what's going to happen now. In five years' time, he's he's going to turn out that he's like the biggest investor in the the Mark Zuckerberg <laughs> of Stark Coin, and he's built this. You know, <laughs> I couldn't do I it without love- Aaron's mate. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that to be the story. I would absolutely love that to be the story. 
<laughs> well, what are you boys going to do with your uh, your money? What's the plan? Because I've already spent mine, so I thought I'd ask you. Uh, well, well, I think I'm... Well, yeah, Simon, you go first. Yeah, I think it's actually perfect timing for me because I recently just reinvested back on the platform. So I obviously had Please. my infamous uh, walkout and then, no, you know... No, yeah. I've found myself a house now. Um, I've got a roof over my head, so I'm back in. Uh, and I'd picked up some like Japanese guys, like my goat show Sasaki. But Alistair and I were trying to do the math, trying to fit in an extra goalkeeper, so I could run like a second team. Like even if it's, even if it's in the bad threshold, like it's still something just like for the spares. But we could only get the ETH so far, and like it actually couldn't be more perfect timing because. Basically, this money now I can put straight towards a threshold keeper or a backup keeper. Um, so, thank you, the crypto gods, I guess. Nice. <laughs> what about I, you, Asi Mac? Oh, I'm just buying more Mechelen players. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I, I just keep chucking my money at Jeffrey Hermans, pretty much. Like he's, mm. he's, he's slowly like he's becoming... Strip, like he's a stripper. Just yeah. oh, if he was in front of me right now, I would just launch my wallet at him. I wouldn't even get the money out of it. He can have the whole thing. Like He's he's like my idol at the moment. I love the hairy man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sliding a dollar into the thong of Jeffrey Hermans. Oh, the dream. Just rubbing it on his head. Mm. <laughs> what about you, Alistair? Have you... Uh... Are you joint in the project or where's your money going? Um, I think, I mean, it would be ridiculous for me to say I'm just going to hold on to it. Um, I think I'm going to buy just some MLS players. Um, I think I'm. I think I've. The FOMO is going to kick in this weekend. MLS is back. I want to have some some skin in the game. So I think I'm probably just going to buy myself like a limited stack or something. Just just go ham into MLS. Have a bit of fun. You get a nice limited stack with that. Yeah, the mm. prices yeah, haven't really nice. gone up for to say no. it starts tomorrow. Like so I really good. That's what I was gonna do with the money. So I sent some offers yesterday for <laughs> Buanga, man of the man of the pod, man of the group. Ooh. Uh Loris, Hollingshead. Um my so favourite basic, forward basically my MLS yours, yeah, yeah, my yeah. favourite forward, Hanny Mukhtar. Um Ooh. which you got me going now. Good. Got me going. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even. I wasn't and even then, thinking about who I was going to buy. But now, now, now I'm juicing. Some beautiful players in there. Well, <laughs> you've got there's some because I was looking at like Luciano Acosta and Almada, and their prices are nice. You can get a nice stack with that money. Yeah. Um, mm. so I'll buy I some thought, super rares. I thought this is a really good idea. Uh, so what I did is cancelled all those offers um, five minutes after I sent them and bid on every Burnley auction that was going for the rares. Um, so instead, I've completely wasted my money and bought a bunch of players who will not be in the Premier League next year. But hopefully, we'll have better utility because we are dog shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go get a top up of another bottle of wine. So oh, get another please get put it in a bag. Bottle. Put it in a bag. Put it in a bag, Aaron. Put it in a bag. At least, just... at least he actually, to- at least he actually told us he was leaving this <laughs> yeah. time. Yeah, we had we had bloody John Nellis on the podcast, an absolute coup, and he just went, oh, just got up and left. Where's he gone? Where's he gone? Came back two minutes later. Oh, I said I were leaving. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. Um, it's not how you treat the Nellis. No, exactly, exactly. And then he, joking like good banter, uh, got up and left to uh, take the piss out of Aaron, which I enjoyed very much. Oh, he has actually got a bag, like an actual Tesco yeah. carrier bag. Yeah. Wow. I, I respect that. Does yeah, that fair play. It'll do. It's like it's like the American horse <laughs> I'm drinking out of the brown bag. Isn't it? <laughs> That's our equivalent. I, th- is Aaron I thought you'd actually. I thought you'd actually put it in there loose, and I was like, "This is going to be <laughs> a train wreck." <laughs> I was really tempted, but then I just know that this is would kill me. Is a person is a person ever uh, not a homeless person on on American TV if they're not drinking out of a brown bag? Like, why is no, that the thing? So I right. So I read. Whether I read somewhere or whether I just believed an urban myth, I think it's because you can't drink openly on the streets. Yeah. So they put it in a brown carrier bag to con- so it, you can't openly tell that it's alcohol, and then you can drink it on the street. So I what think you do is, so what you do is you drink any soft drink just yeah. normally, and then, and then, then weirdly there. drink out of a plastic a brown bag every now and then. Just... Yeah, exactly that. Exactly. <laughs> What's their policy on goon bags? 
Okay. Who knows? That's a they great don't know question. what's in it, do they? It's That's not a, a can. Question. It's not a bottle. As long as you've I mean, not it... got a see-through one, then I'm sure you could I'm... get away with it. I mean, if anyone if needs a pillow, mine, it's the homeless. Can... Yeah. yeah, well, that's what I thought. It seems it seems perfect to utilize it in that exact way. When you said you can blow it up and use it as a pillow, the first thing I thought was we, homeless. We might, we might, homeless. We might, we might, we, listen, lads, we might have fucked around and found something for the homeless. Like we could, we might start a charity, and it's just goon bags that it's got like a little feather lining on the inside. Oh, I'll call so that once you have finished, it's it's a little pillow. If it, it means might. I could just go and get peppered on goon bags and then just give it to a random geezer on the street i'll contribute yeah yeah well to be fair I'm I ready. Like they at least deserve they at least deserve the wine as well don't they crying out loud got it rough well they buy the wine and then they have a nice you know yeah, <laughs> yeah. donate yeah, your we'll starkware to me and if yeah. you ever get questioned you got mine it's a plus to me bag yeah matt you could just you you need one of them like really thin plastic straws that just like go up your body to your mouth and just to tie yeah. that to your waist and then yeah. no one will know it's alcohol and you're just actually sat there just sipping yeah. away walking around stuck to like, my torso like with alcohol, little like dude. medical pastors yeah nice good <laughs> mark, bandages. mark just effectively on a drip at this point of six pound wine <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well let's I mean, say, no one's I gonna like call like you on it suitably, uh, no. No. I mean, I might. I feel like everyone's suitably um, hydrated, we'll say. So, shall we uh, shall we do our first quiz? Yes. Let's go. Oh, I, love it. I love it. Because this is the first time. We've got two rounds. So, this is the first time ever we can do a head-to-head 1v1 in both rounds. So, we'll let you boys pick. So, Alistair. Oh, mm. has Mark, have you picked, Aaron? I'm, I've come up with a solution for this rather than uh, it being oh people's gosh. choice. I've thought about this. I've even, normally I write this down 10 minutes before, like, you know, I had yeah, literally you, sent this you to you boys effort. yesterday yeah. saying how excited I was. Oh, my shit. my dreams were in tatters when Alistair decided to turn around and say he doesn't really care about football because that's... <laughs> <laughs> that's I do now. Do I do it? now. I yeah, didn't. Do I do now. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, it's more to do with history of football, which... Um, Perfect. Only one of I them. I love this. Only one of them. This. So what I want you to do is, between Simon and Alistair, you can either do it in person, like now, or you can do it over your phone or whatever. Just pick a number between one and two each year. Delegate that. One of you is number one, one of you is number two. Mark and Adam, you do the same in the group chat, and then I'll tell yeah. you who that's paired up to each other. Rather than you picking who goes against we who, go. we'll All make right. it random. Just text me which number you want, Adam. Yeah, that's a good idea. Right, yeah, I have done. Right, so out of Alistair and Simon, who is number one? I am number one. So, Simon, you are against Mark. Alistair, you are against Adam. Let's go. So, if anyone's, if anyone's listened to this before, they know I always want Adam to lose. So, <laughs> I'm going to give the first... Well, it works quite well. So, number ones, I'll let you have the first round because that's the one that I think Adam would be very good at. So, oh, that's sad. Mark versus Simon. Simon will let you go first. Thank Tenor you. ball. Don't know if you've listened to the podcast before, but Tenor Ball is, I'll give you a question and you've got to name the top 10. Um, if you get one wrong, you lose a life. Both people start with two lives. First, be, first person to lose a life, loses. And it's it's alternating answers. Alternating so goes, go yeah. First, so you'll go then first, Mark. then Mark. So what I want to know from you two is, can <laughs> you name the top 10 most appearances by Australians in the Premier League? Oh shit! Okay, okay. This is a real, real underdog kind of vibe. Um, right. I'm gonna go. Me and Simon, yeah. Yeah. So Simon can Simon can get us going. I'm gonna go Kuehl. That is number three. On the board. Let's go. On the board. I'm gonna say Tim Cahill. Number six. Number number six. Oh, number six. That's throwing. Oh. Me. I was expecting to be higher there. Uh, gonna yeah, go Yedinak. <laughs> Man. Yedinak is not on the is list. Is he not? The beard? No. Now, I, think before, I, know, I think I know who's number one. Before Adam starts fucking researching and trying to find out if my answers are correct like he normally does, <laughs> this, this was off the Socceroos website. So if it's not fucking right, you can blame yourselves. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing anything today. I, I've been accused of cheating in the recent past. So I'm. You have. Hand to God. Can't be doing that. So. Marcos? Uh, Mark Schwarzer. Mark Schwarzer number is number one. Yeah. Yeah. 
Nice, that's big. <laughs> now, seeing as you've only got one life left, and I'm a, I'm a generous a man. A generous guy. <laughs> yeah, I knew this was one good. of them has already been said today on the podcast. Yes, I'm going Aaron Moy. And it, I'm hoping. <laughs> did he play a bunch for Huddersfield? Aaron Moy is number nine. He played for Brighton yeah. as well, didn't he? And so. he played for Brighton, he yeah. Did. Which yeah. probably got more games at Brighton in the Premier League. It was better at Huddersfield, though. <laughs> it was better at Huddersfield. I've got a picture uh, of him taking a corner at Huddersfield. Mark Viduka. Mark Viduka is number five. Nice. Five. I think this could be where I bow out, but Lucas Neal. <sighs> Lucas Neal. He's number Bells two. Up. Yes, super. That's a suit. That's a suit. <laughs> I'm him. <laughs> I'm him. Quick, <laughs> Sam, to the good bag. <laughs> like you're like you're a superhero on a sidekick. <laughs> that needed one of them little like cutscenes, like nah, 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 and just <laughs> <laughs> and just us in the gutter. <laughs> Right, so I think, Alistair, because I'm generous, this could be completely wrong. I think Lucas Neal should open you up to an answer if you're struggling at any point. You can't help him out because he's, on, because he's got two lives left. Oh, is he still got... Oh, shit, my bad. <laughs> oh, we're Maybe still doing the Socceroos. Yeah, we're, oh, we're, we're still uh, on the Socceroos. It's on Mark, How many... isn't it? Yeah. So, so we've, had, we've had one, two, three, five, six, and nine. Oh, so there's still a few left. Did Can Lucas Neal break someone's leg really badly? Yeah, really bad. <laughs> that is not on the list. I don't remember what? him playing that much. He was pretending that you'd said that was a player, Marcus. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. It's just a shit joke, was it? Um, oh, fuck. I'm going to say this guy, but I, I'm not 100% sure if he's Australian or not. Brett Ormerod. Brett Ormerod's from Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're laughing, <laughs> and it is not on the list. Blackpool, New South Wales. No, I know who you're going for. Yeah, I'm going to say uh, it. This is, is kind he... of a clue to Simon if he knows it. Yeah, that, one, that one was of who the I names was... is correct, but you've not. That's got who the last I was talking right. about. That's who I was talking about. Is the link? <laughs> Brett Allred. You, you, you know what, Mark? I, I feel for you because you've, you've got it in there. You've just not said the right words. I've hit the post, have I? Yeah, you've hit the post. One life each, Simon. You get this. I think I think Mark's gone. Well, if he hit the post, I'm skying this over the bar. Um, <laughs> I'm absolutely blanking. I'm going to go... Going to go... Oh, I've got nothing. See, my issue is I actually don't even know these players that are left either, and I've watched the Premier League since. I, I think, remember, other than so. the one, other than the one that I know, I think I've only got one guess. To be honest, I'm gonna go mm. Matthew Lecky, who never played in the Premier League. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not yeah. on the list. <laughs> ah, ah, no. Honorable mention. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, honourable mention. Bundesliga second division at one point. Or did he play in? Did he actually play in the Bundesliga oh, at one point? Walk in Wikipedia. Stop. <laughs> so I, the one that we're all talking Wait, about. Brett, can I say? Yeah. It? I think. He's got it. Go on. You can do it, Mark. I think I know it. You know. Obviously, I have got Brett right. Emerton. That's correct. It's Brett That's Emerton. The one. I've never actually Lucas heard of him, to be honest. They played together at Blackburn, didn't they? Yeah. Um, also, Mark, uh, Lucas, I've just Googled it. Lucas Neal broke Jamie Carragher's leg. So That was it. Yeah, yeah. that's why I remember it. Yeah. Really, mate. Quite like Lucas Neal, then. Yeah, same. I didn't realise <laughs> I did. Right, so, Mark, do you know any more, or should we let Adam em- embarrass everyone? I don't, no, even think, you... I don't even think they'll be right. Alistair, would no. you know any? Um, I think that's, that's stretching three. it. Three? Oh, man. Uh, did Bresciano play in the Premier League? Marco Bresciano. Yeah, I think not he did. A, not according to my list, unless his name's Mark Bosnich. Oh, Bozo! Oh, yeah, I forgot about Bozo. <laughs> and then the of other course. one is Stan, Stan Lazaridis. Stan Lazaridis. Oh, Stan Lazaridis. That's it. Yeah. Oh, then, uh, did Daniel Arzani play in the in the Premier League at all? No, he played at Celtic. Never mind. Number 10 is Never. Robbie Slater. No, I wouldn't oh. him. My only other guess. I need to go and get my charger. Because I've... Uh... <laughs> I can't believe Yedinak's not on that list. I thought he played a bunch for Crystal Palace. 
Yeah. Mm. Oh, have a quick look now whilst not enough. Adam's fucking about. I feel like my bloody charger's not working. Why is that? That was a good list. Oh, that was a very good list, Aaron. Yeah, I, I try to make it relatable, you see. <laughs> I can't believe I followed up with saying I'm him with Matthew Leckie. (laughs) (laughs) I already know what edit we need to do now is the photo of him like this. And then then say Matthew Leckie. And the next one is just him (laughs) Right, so it's... uh, Wait, who is it 1-0 to currently? I'm going to celebrate this thing. Is it 1-0 to us? Yeah, here we go. I love Mark saying going back. This is great. I kind of wish all the bags were clear because Mark's looked like he hasn't started yet, but I feel like they're, <laughs> yeah, they're definitely yeah. going to be like half. At least down. half empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, well, that is a that's a big sack of piss. It is. <laughs> I think you do get right, the best value because you obviously got more leaders per dollar per pound. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Well, I suppose technically Simon's on an infinite amount of wine per dollar because he didn't pay for it, so... True. Three liters. And she made it. She made it very clear to never return it. So, yeah. <laughs> Come on friend. then, Aaron. What's round two? So I've got a question first before. Oh God, that's I say good. this, Alistair. What would you say your second sport is? Uh, that I follow um, it would probably be either rugby league or cricket. It's going to be cricket. Well, cricket is correct. Yeah, I mean, you guys are you guys are familiar with rugby league, wouldn't you? you you're oh. Northerners. So my, I'm probably more, hopefully more familiar with cricket. My tenor ball for you is: mm. Can you name the ten different ways you can be out in cricket? Oh, yes! Ooh, this is like course. my this is my this dream. Is, this is a good one. This is a good yeah, one. Yeah, very good. And All right, who's going you know first? what? Before we've got breaking news. Before you say this. That list, bear in mind, it's not my fault. It was Socceroos. According to Transfer Market, Yedinak <laughs> played 90 games in the Premier League. According to go. Transfer Market, Robbie Slater played 83. So we've got a robbery. It, no, a robber. Um, it, <laughs> it, so if if that's an, if, if Transfer Market's correct, then theoretically that was a draw. So I'm only going off what it said so I think we'll I'll take it. class it as a draw and it comes we'll take to the it. final round I'm fine with straight that to straight yeah. to the goon bag straight to the goon bag I'm fine with that we're all friends here so seeing as though Simon went first we will let Adam have the first call on the cricket round so 10 ways you can get out go on Adam <clears throat> bold that is correct thank you uh, <laughs> just like Aaron Moy I'll take, I'll take a sweet LBW that is correct um, I mean, I don't caught like caught yep. out. Caught out is correct. Like the terminology you want for it, do you know what I mean? Well, uh, we'll go. Ru- we'll take. We'll take the gimmies. Uh, run out. That is on the list. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I will take. Oh, see, I don't know. If, is it technically different? I don't think it is different. Is it different? Well, it depends what you're going to say. That's the question, isn't it? That is the question. <laughs> Um, I'm going to say caught and bold. That is not on the list. Is it? Are we just classing that as being caught? It out? is just being caught out. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So, uh, is it uh, me was... again, or is yeah? yeah. yeah. Um. All right. We'll, we'll. I'll go stumped. Stumped is correct. Oh, fuck it. How is that not just technically run out if caught and bold is it? That's because you have stupid ran. fucking game. But you're you out. Run, yeah. You've got to run to be run out. Of running. You're out of your crease, <laughs> so it's the act of running. That's the whole point. Hold on a minute. You said caught, and then your next guess was caught. Was caught. Yes, I'm well aware. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm panicking. Just making, just making sure before you start kicking I'm off. Panicking. I'm start kicking off now. I'll be honest. I didn't know there were 10 ways you could get out in cricket. Yeah. Um, well, I thought this was actually going to fly through, and they've actually got a bonus point, but I don't think we're going to get to there. So. <laughs> oh, no. There's, there's nowhere near a bonus point. I don't even think I've got another one. I actually don't have another one. So we've had caught, bold, LBW, stumped, and run out. Ah, oh, fucking hell, yeah. This is going to be yours, Alistair. I don't mind losing at not football. That's fine. I reckon um, I've got a few waiting in the wings if I. Do you think? It comes to it. You, but you I've, get out of there, Sam. You butt your I'll, fat I'll, face we'll go, out. 
<laughs> we'll go retired hurt. Ooh. That was the bonus point. Was it? <laughs> so I'm going to give it you. <laughs> but now we're really fucked if he comes back. <laughs> I can't believe Don't say that's Matthew what Lecky. you've gone with. <laughs> yeah, Matthew Lecky. <laughs> Matthew Lecky is on the list. Um, all right, I'll go hit wicket. Hit wicket, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. You can tell Alistair knows as well because it's the exact terminology as well. Not like hit his own wicket. It is literally <laughs> his yeah. hit wicket. Stood stumps. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, because so, I feel like seeing, the... seeing as though you're struggling, mate. You know, I'll try help you out. Are you going to be going, generous for once? If you're going off, if you're going off hit wicket, think of something else you could do to yourself or that's self blame. Yeah, see, that was the other one I was thinking. But I, yeah, I say that. But then self blame. <laughs> yeah, that's what they give. Self blame. You got <laughs> <laughs> Or is uh, it then, Billy is Bremner? That... that one, Billy Bremner. Yeah, it gives it gives it all that. Is that just technically? Um, I'll say played on. What are you asking like, us to play on, or what? As in, like, no, I'm saying that like you've played on, played onto your own stumps. But no, is that technically that is, just bowled out? That is incorrect. Yeah, that's just. That's, yeah, you can have yeah, it. Yeah. So we've oh, got. Do you want me to run through the rest? Yeah, so Ooh, yeah, go caught, on. bold, LBW, stumped, hit wicket, run out, and... Retired. Oh, no, that's it. And retired, yeah. So there should be four left. Four left. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, handled the ball. Yep. Uh, timed out. Timed out, yep. Uh, obstructing the field. Yep. Ooh. This and then the what's the last one? one? Oh, man. I didn't know any of these were a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Uh, 12-year-old me is screaming at me right now. <laughs> Used to be like a point of pride. Um, oh, what would it be? It's a, oh, it's hit a the ball twice. Kick. Hit the ball twice. There we go. That's it. Good, ticked that's off. Impre- yeah. Nice. That is, um, you would have absolutely smoked. There was no way I was it's getting anywhere time. near any of those, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I've got a tiny bit of ginger beer left. <sighs> yeah, Mark, you were right. We should have live streamed this and just done it at a time, like on weekend or something, and just got absolutely And just smashed. got absolutely hammered. Yeah. There's always another day. Yeah. Make it a double-double <laughs> sore down under part two. <laughs> but we'll do it at your time, so we'll yeah, start yeah. at seven o'clock in the morning for oh, you. I'd so love you can... that. Ooh, that'd be fun, that'd yeah. Be good, yeah. After a night out. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, you've, Stay up you've all heard of yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God, kick-ons. You've heard of day drunk, but not morning drunk. Just doing afters <laughs> for the podcast. <laughs> well, Aaron, in we've, hand. Um, I'd say we've uh, suitably embarrassed ourselves, me particularly, which I know you will enjoy. It's so um, good. Shall we immediately jump into the thing where we embarrass ourselves every single week and immediately jump into sore air darts? We shall, because this week... Suit of us a lot better than other weeks. Oh yeah, of course. Because if at the not the last episode, the episode before, because of timings, it was yeah. our friend James who yeah. shout out James. Actually, he helped me decide the cricket tenable. So good. So gotta he, give, he gotta to... give him a shout out. No, he's he's not to actually. Don't fuck. It, I can see him fucking texting him already. I'm gonna message him right now. So he didn't you say. Can't... The top you ten ways to get out. Game. He said, "What about a different sport like cricket?" And then yeah, I see, went, "No, he's fucked me." Yeah, see, so he's fucked me. You yeah. couldn't pick in a fucking cricket question. <laughs> so, Fuck you. Hope West Ham get relegated. James's. There we go. Week on the podcast, we had the first ever episode where he actually threw the darts at the board rather than just playing sore air darts. And he hit 122 on the board, which meant that that was our target for the week, rather in, than in 180. Six, in six starts. In six starts, to in explain. Six starts. Yeah, it's, because, re- because three, that's not that bad. He's really well, shit. Six, six starts. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. So the target was 122, and I went with Baliu from Rio Vallecano. Mark went Suchek, or was that you, Adam? No, I went Suchek. You went Suchek, me. and then Mark went Bono, is he called, from Union Berlin? Frederick Rono. Rono, that's it, not Bono. <laughs> That's like, my... you're playing pro, like you're playing pro <laughs> evo. <laughs> That's my handwriting, is that that it looks like a B, not an R. Um, and we ended up on 128.6. Oh, that's so we were, we were so close. close. We were close. And to be honest, Rono let us down because he got a 73.5. 
So oh, yeah. that's Mark's fault, really. Um, James went Kufal, Emerson and Alvarez with his shitty West Ham stack, and they got 137, so they're out of the picture Rubbish. anyway. Rubbish. So this week, we will go back to basics. So if you don't know what So Red Arts is, you got to win for 180 points with three players. We'll both let you have three each, obviously. Um, no restrictions, no L15s, no positions, no nothing. They've got to play this weekend coming. This weekend before Sunday. I don't think like... we're recording Sunday night, though, are we? Are we not? Well, won't this go out on Tuesday? Well, yeah, but is that not for the Sunday just gone? We haven't even got another guest lined up yet, have we? No, we haven't. <laughs> <laughs> no, this, this, yeah, no, this we can, is, we can play any It's Wednesday. Weekend. It's going out next week. So it'll be the Don't ask. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you are right. Yeah, you are yeah. right. Don't ask Mark. He'll be all over the shop. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Mark's fucked me up with the timelines. <laughs> so it, any I'm not writing another can... letter of apology next week. 2029. <laughs> <laughs> So any game this weekend, as long as it's within the game week, Friday to Monday, um, and then we will announce, we will put it on the next episode. So any three players, don't matter who it is. So don't know about you boys. I've got mine. Oh, I'm going to hear yours first then, because I had one in my head, but I feel like if you fuck me over here, it'll change. Yeah, no, I've got mine. I've got a banger. So um, as you know, Burnley are playing on Saturday. Oh, for fuck's sake. Um, <laughs> it's uh, Oliver Glasner's first game in charge of Crystal Palace. Yeah. So obviously they're going to get spanked. Burnley are going to win three 0 Um, we're going to absolutely piss it. It's going to be class. So I'm going to pick a new player who needs to redeem himself after Saturday with his magnificent zero against Arsenal. He did play, um, but he got a zero. I'm going to go for our on loan right back and say Lorenz Asignon. So you're A double S A double S I G N O N. A double S I G N O N. Right. Um. You're picking a defender in a yeah. game against a new manager bounce team. Yeah. So, Mark, we need some big scores, which helps us. So, no, right, I'll you're getting an assist in a clean sheet. We're running three now. Go on, Mark. I'll let you have it. So, in celebration of the return of the mighty Chilean division. <laughs> Fuck it, no. <laughs> University of Death Cat- Catholic or whatever they call it. Meaning that my, my full... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Meaning that my full Universidad Catolica collection has utility back. I'm going to go for a highly rated under-23 midfielder. Um, they are at home to Deportivo Nublens. Oh, piss that. Well, he's... Yeah, they're, they're absolutely <laughs> piss it, mate. Yeah. Nublens? What a fucking set of idiots. <laughs> fucking Nublens, yeah. And I'm going to go for Alexander Aravina. Yeah, class player. Yeah, heard a lot about him. Do you nice. Just spell that for me, please. A R A V E N A. Do you know what I'll say, Mark? What I will mm. say about you before Aaron says his pick right. is: we go. I think for an Englishman, mm. I think you have got the most random gallery of like anyone I know. That's not like you know, like incredible, like massive amounts invested where they've got all the big teams, so they've had to get some random teams as well. Like your the fact that you've got a full Rodez collection from mm-hmm. French Division Two and a full Universidad de Catolica stack from Chile, mm-hmm. it's just it's what Sora is all about. I love it. Isn't that the fan. first two go to teams that when you sign up? That's just the first ones that you think of. Just yeah, you know, I'm, French league. I think, I think when I when I signed up and picked my common players, I'm pretty sure I picked a Rodez pack, and it gave me some players. Yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting well, for the I'm waiting for the uh, all expenses paid trips to uh, <laughs> top collectors to Chile. So that'll be a good one. My maths has always been really good when it comes to that. So, yeah. Adam, you're going to get a twenty-three. No, wrong. Mark, you're going to get about a forty-five. No, nah, so we need a wrong. big score. So Dennis Buanga comes in as our third pick of the uh, week. He is getting a hat trick on the first day back in the MLS, and he's gonna score a hundred, and he's gonna win me my first ever podium. We're going bust by about a thousand points here. I'll take that because that means Buanga's had a fucking mint weekend, and it means Asignon's had a mint weekend as well. Exactly, we're we're happy. Yeah, yeah true. So, boys, who wants to go first? So well, no, no cap, no positions, yeah. anything. So I just get to list my three players, yeah. All right, yeah. so yeah. I've gone for a, a Premier League themed 
um, darts combo. So he's obviously been in great goal scoring form. Uh, I'm going to go Hoyland from Man U. Ooh, can't stop scoring. (laughs) And then, you know, keep the theme. Keep the theme running. I'm going to go Erling Haaland from no, Haaland. 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 And then I'm going to go Ben Mee for Brentford because I read our names rhyme with the Haaland theme. Ah, so. come on, Hoiberg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you could have gone. You could have gone. Hoiberg, Ben Mee, to guard. Yeah, like we could have gone. We just needed their alls with funny, funny slashes to him, didn't we? <laughs> Harry Kane. <laughs> Why is it just so random that you've gone for Ben Me as well? Like, I thought you had to go for someone a little bit higher Do you know profile. What? Do you know what? The fact that you brought Ben Me up is mint because, you know, you see these, like, random, like, skill compilations, like, highlight compilations. I saw a Ben Me compilation on Twitter the other day. I've seen the same it one. It was the classic. Same. It was the <laughs> Ronaldo, where, like, who's the best player in the world? Me. <laughs> and then it's just a, a, a compilation of Ben Me, and I'll be honest, they're all from when he was at Burnley. Because when I tell you I would die for Benjamin Me, I would I would nail myself to a cross if that man asked me to. I build him a statue. I love everything about him. Come back, Ben, you sweet little albino bastard. Well, you know that my <laughs> my humour is top tier. Yes. Um, one yeah. of the things that really made me laugh. At- and it's such shit banter uh, on Twitter was it was Ben me stood in the corner of the box and it just said caption that's me in the corner you know the lyrics from the song and I just I saw it and I just instantly started laughing and thought this is why I have no friends because yeah. I find stuff like that so funny there's and- another there's another Burnley name meme that makes the rounds and it's when Chris Wood was stood next to Rob Holding yeah, yeah. Holding, Holding Wood, Wood. yeah, yeah. Classic. Really Classic. <laughs> Go on, Alice. Have you got oh, a nice. funny rhyming names that you've got for us? <laughs> no, no, I haven't put in as much thought into it. Um, I just thought I'd do a little MLS tribute. It's back this week. Um, so I've gone for the Flying Scotsman, Johnny Russell, up front. Yes. He's usually good for like a 50, 55 if he doesn't score, which I'm not really assuming that he will. Um, then I've gone for Georgie Mihailovic back in the MLS. Um, you know, hoping he'll pull out something have, kind of you'll have, mediocre. You'll have to spell that one for him, Alistair. Yeah, you'll have to spell that. Adam, send me out to spell that in a bit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just put Georgie. I'll you. give it a go. Hold on, let me give it a go. Um, M I H A I L O V I C. I think that might be it. You what should go I outside know. more often, Alistair. Yeah. <laughs> Stop spending all my Say spare time learning how to spell oh, Serbian-sounding yeah. names. Yeah, nice. The Colorado <laughs> Rapids. Nice. It's because I grew up with the, you know, kind of 1999 to 2012 Socceroos where everyone was Croatian, so I'm good at yeah. spelling, those, you know, <laughs> Baltic <laughs> names. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, now I'm fully expecting, though, um, Georgie's going to roll out a flat 60. He's going to get an assist, but he's going to have like 19, negative 19 AA. So I need like a big gun to bring it home. So I'm going to pull in uh, Cucho Hernandez as my last pick. Second best striker in the league. Nice. <laughs> that's, that's got bust written all over it, I think. But we'll, we'll, we'll proceed. It's the MLS. You never know what's going to happen. There's literally no way you can predict who's going to score what. That's why the MLS is such a ridiculous league to play Serie for. And that's, that's, that's why, why we stopped doing the podcast. It. But that's why people <laughs> love the MLS. We've had a couple of people on here that we talked about the chaos of the league and that it mm. is it's truly just insane. And the fact that you could have one player who absolutely bangs on Serie one year and then you find out that he's gone to the Romanian second division because that's about the level that it's at. The red, the red Cross roulette is insane. <laughs> <laughs> we love it. Oh, I love so red arts. I'm so glad we you came up with that, Aaron. Even though we're shit it. Oh yeah, my, we are. Really I think it's shit my favourite it. feature that we do. Speaking of MLS, by the way, uh, Joseph Panstel's just been announced at um, oh, LA shit. Galaxy. At Galaxy. Yeah. Which nice. is that actually quite a big move for MLS. Combines your two loves mm-hmm. as well: the uh, Belgian Pro League and the MLS. It does. Same as Hugo Snipers. Yeah. What an absolute fucking baller he is. Is that how you pronounce his name? What, as in I pronounce it? Or as in... Hypers. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah ask the not... expert over there. Yeah, it's not... I, I, I wasn't even trying to rib you there. I just didn't... I'd never heard someone say his name. 
Oh, so I'm when assuming you said that's when right. you said Cypers, I was like, oh, cool. That's not how I'd expect it to pronounce. That's, that's literally the first time I've that. ever heard anyone say Cypers. <laughs> how would you expect it to be said? Like Kuipers, Kuipers, or Kite, or like Kuipers, or something. Hold on a minute. Be Belgian. Think Belgian. Yeah. I just see a bald, is he Belgian? Sexy man in my head when you say think Belgian. That's all. I can't is it, tell is it, is it Vincent <laughs> Company? Is it Vincent Company? No, it's Jeffrey Herbert. Come on. <laughs> well, you said speaking of the MLS, Aaron, and I was about to say speaking of features because mm. the lunch wheel. Gentlemen. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh, so, oh, there it is. I'm about to say. So it is. I've got, I've got it up and it's ready. Don't worry. And I've so, also got the lunch wheel up. Talk do we have confirmation wheel. that? Okay, so the lunch wheel um, was a, a brainchild of ours, um, purely based out of complete nonsense. Um, we were trying to come up with segment ideas, and I was like, "We need some kind of element of risk, and what better way to add risk into a segment than to have lunch on the line?" Um, you know, we're hungry, we're hungry boys, and if if we know that our tummies will be full, you know, if our Sarah players do well, that's extra motivation. So, rivals had just kind of launched, and we're like, "Let's play some rivals." Winner gets to spin the lunch wheel. Loser has to pay for the lunch. So. So far, we've had a dozen eggs come up twice as the re- as the reward. <laughs> um, <laughs> listeners of the show will have seen Simon say uh, the word Bob Scoofs um, over and over again with uh, as close to a dozen eggs in his mouth as possible. Um, and last week, I decided to drink my eggs, and that wasn't that wasn't amazing. So, um, some good content out there for anyone who's you know got an afternoon so- free. <laughs> My question is, before we confirm winners, because we did play, we had a Rivals game yesterday when we thought we were supposed to, well, when you thought we were supposed to be recording, and when mm. Mark actually did tell you we were recording. Um, it, so, I mean, in Mark's defence, he told us the right time and you the right time, just hadn't accounted for that full day's difference. So, <laughs> it's it's technically the world's fault. So he fucked up. So I'll back him. No, I'll back Mark. Now, I don't. my question is, is, I understand that it's the lunch wheel, do they have to be eaten in one lunch sitting? What you because... is yes, yes, absolutely. So my and is, preferably is, on I'm, air I'm... as well. Yeah, so the, the recording would always have to happen. Now, my question is, is, I genuinely don't think I could get through a full jar of mayonnaise. In... <laughs> well, don't, well, don't land, don't land on that then. <laughs> yeah. Don't land on the, on the jar of mayonnaise. I mean... It, it, if we've learned anything from our year and a bit of podcasting, it's that people eating into microphones, people love that. Like that's a really, it's like ASMR yeah. for the listeners, yeah, so, especially a tub, tub of mayonnaise. Yeah, sloppy <laughs> and awful. That'd no. be longer than the episode, by the way. You just get like an hour in <laughs> and then the next hour is just Adam sat here like this. Well, do you know what we could do it. is instead of doing it for lunch, if I do get something like that, because we know for the beetroot juice, I've forgotten to do that. I, the next time we record, if it lands on something like that, I will literally get the jar of mayonnaise while we record and eat the jar of mayonnaise while we record. We're never getting a guest for the next episode, <laughs> yeah. by the way. Now you're talking. <laughs> so what we need to do, because we played Inter Milan versus Atletico Madrid yesterday. Um, unfortunately, I didn't um, match up against you guys in time, but we all did set our lineups. So what scores did you guys get for that game? Before anyone says their scores, by the way, you're acting like you don't know already, and you're trying. So to, I don't know. I don't know. That, I don't you're know trying to play scores. this off that you're not excited. You've just been on about eating a jar of mayonnaise yourself, so you know exactly no, where I, you've finished. I genuinely don't know these boys' scores. I think Simon did pretty well. I, I, um, I dropped out. I basically my defender went off injured after a couple of minutes, so I thought <laughs> I'd big brain move. I'll bring on Memphis Depay as my substitution because, you know, Good. it's Memphis Depay. He's going to come in. He's going to get a decisive. I'm going to be a genius. Snatch it from the jaws of defeat. Didn't come on the pitch at all. Just sat on the bench. So <laughs> I'm out of the running. <laughs> yeah. So I beat Alfa. What was that? I think it's, is it loser is it pays? pays? It's the winner. Yeah. That wins the lunch and the losers pay, isn't it? So we need, we need exact yeah. scores, don't we? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I, I scored... Fucking nothing. Uh, 249.7 points. Okay. From four players. Okay. Aaron, I don't think you were far off that. Well, I'm now so happy Memphis Depay never stepped foot on that pitch. 
Because <laughs> I, I beat that by 11 points, which means if he got a second on that pitch, I lose that game. <laughs> I got 261. Right, so, okay. Okay. I scraped it. So, Don't I went for it. I know that I beat you. Yeah, I went it's going to be uh, down to Simon and Adam. Yeah, I went through an Atletico Inter hybrid with Oblak, Jose Maria Jimenez, and Anton Griezmann. And Mkhitaryan. Griezmann. 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 and Martinez. And I scored 279.7. Nice. So, Simon, it comes down to me and you. Yeah, boy. How did you do? All right. So, I went for the Inter stack. Had to get Oblak as the keeper. I maxed out my tick attacker baby, 40 points bonus. I finished on 315 points. Ooh. So 315.1, in, if, if that makes a difference. Needs to, needs to be specific. And it does, it, you See, do I'm need that point one. So I went for a full interstack in homage of the interstack that didn't win me anything for 15 game weeks. <laughs> um, despite costing me £350 to put together. So I had Jan Sommer, Benjamin Pavard, Henrik Mkhitaryan, Lautaro Martinez, and Matteo Darmian. However, Ooh. I didn't max out my tick attacker. I only got 205 Ooh. passes. And I scored 320.2. Ah. <laughs> so this is what it's all about. Teeth, by the skin of my teeth. Now, I can't find a way to flip my screen currently, but I have got the lunch wheel up here, and I am going to record it. Okay, we're just going to have to trust you. As long as you edit this video in better than you did the uh, Spotify episode this week, mate, you'll be fine. Alistair, is this this your face that I'm following around the the screen? Yep, that's me. That's lovely. Right, so you can see we've got a sloppy steak, roast, HSP. We've got a couple of Australian delicacies in. Let me... Why am I nervous? I want to see it. I want. I know. Yeah, I'm a bit not... annoyed. We can't see it. Oh, it's not. Uh... Oh, oh! I'll take that. That's oh. that's not too bad. I don't mind. It's not what we want to hear. Want. It's uh, it's extra hot wings. Oh, Ooh, you love okay. Extra sauce. hot wings, but yeah. Now, now I do. I do that's like good, hot sauce. That's good podcasting because I when I say extra hot, I, I my thought process behind that one was like. You know, like hot ones style hot wings, where yeah, yeah. Yeah. you you record a podcast, mm. slowly eating chicken wings, and basically start kind of dying in the That's background. Yeah, so we can do that. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Do that. I want to see hot ones, and we're just sitting here eating wings and talking shit. <laughs> That's spicy thing. That's a that good is fucking show. brilliant. That is brilliant. Maybe we steal that. I like that because this is our podcast, so intellectual property technically it's ours. <laughs> So I don't think he's got a leg to stand on. I think that's ours. Now, yep. my question is, so am I having to buy a hot sauce that's ridiculously hot? Or do you want me to get like wings from somewhere and just get their hottest sauce? Hmm. Is there so somewhere like, near yeah. you that does like a, you know, sign this waiver, you're going to die so kind of hot wings? We have, <laughs> we have Wingstop. They do an atomic wing sauce. Okay, Which that sounds good. Atomic sounds the hottest one. Yeah. Is this, are Atomic you doing this sounds on the pretty good. Well? I can do it on the podcast if you yeah, want. Yeah, you've got to do it whilst we're recording the next episode. Okay, because I can pick it up on my way on from work, and um, yeah, I'll bring. I like it, that. I'll bring it for the next. Okay, podcast. so now we've now, got to basically we'll send you the equivalent of that cost in Ethereum. <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> Starknet. Do you take Starknet? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, suddenly, I, I can't suddenly take, they're I can't the world's most expensive chicken wings. <laughs> <laughs> this is like this is like that guy. Wing. Do you remember that guy that paid, paid a yeah. full Bitcoin for a Domino's pizza when he, it was at like two, he bought two Domino's pizza, two oh, bitcoins, two, no, two for bitcoins like a pizza. for two, yeah, for a pizza. And then ten years later, it's worth yeah, yeah. thousands. It's the same as um, a guy who he offered people a million pounds to find the password to his encrypted hard drive. Because he had mm. like fifty thousand Bitcoin on there, but couldn't remember how to access it, and no one still to this day has accessed that hard drive. That does that. Mark and Aaron, do you reckon that since Alster's the biggest loser of them all, should he just have to pay for the wings? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. Go down to the bus. <laughs> I think so. More fool me for trusting in Memphis to pie. I mean, 
What am I thinking? I was, uh, was going to say, if me and Mark did a spin of the wheel each and it just decided a meal that we've got to eat before the next episode. I, look, I, I'm I'm I all for spinning the, the lunch wheel more than more than once. I, I did initially kind of say, should we do pod v pod? Um, and we landed on every man for himself. But, I mean, Simon, I don't know about you, but I'm happy to contribute to the lunches of two other men uh, just so we can see them spin the lunch wheel two, two more rather, times. Rather than you paying for hours, why don't all of us spin the wheel and then it has to be a whatever <laughs> we land on, we have to do. Hang on. What have I won then? <laughs> no, you're, you're still getting yours paid for. You're, you, you're yeah. getting yours you paid for. You yeah. Won your, yeah, you've okay, won yeah. your hot wings. But you then us, us, us four, us four we're, we're just going to buy our own. 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 Yeah. Okay. yeah, let's go. I mean, of Wait, course. Can I, can, I count, can I count you all in? I was about to say, Adam, editing wise, are we just going to take a photo of this rather than all Literally, four of us videoing yeah. it? You take photos and I will um, put them all in there. I'll do a tweet also, with all of them anyway. I will need a link to this, the wheel. Has everyone got it's, a link to the wheel? It's in the, it's in the chat. chat. The recording. Oh. I'll put it in there again just in case you can't see it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. We should post right, it. So we're all spinning right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All righty. So count us in, Adam. Are you ready? Three, two, one, spin. Oh god! This is so exciting. Oh no! This is so exciting. This is so exciting, especially now I know that mine's good. Oh um, yes! What? Oh, what? That. what hey! That? Have I? So have I won a limited card, or do I have to buy the limited card? <laughs> <laughs> what did you get? Because who the fuck is Danny Vukovic? <laughs> <laughs> he is coming is he your the, way. He, you are a millionaire, my friend. Is he the keeper? Is he the keeper? For the Central Coast Mariners. Is he the one that absolutely fucked up the other day when that boy missed an open net from yep, the yard? That's him. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, well, so the, the the quick backstory on that is that so there was some rumblings in the So Rare Discords a, quite a while ago that someone had found the A-League cards in the API for So Rare. So someone was just shit stirring. They're like, yep, A-League's coming. So big brains over here. We all went out and bought a bunch of A-League, pl- like people who were playing in the A-League. And Simon spent something like 0.2 of an ETH on a rare Danny Vukovic <laughs> in the hopes that it would turn into a you know a million-dollar card. Um yeah, no, nah, it didn't go that well. So, but now Aaron can join that very uh, exclusive he's, club. He's staying with me forever as well. So, Do you know what, Simon? I'm starting to quickly realise why you left in um, <laughs> a fury. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just so everyone knows the difference in point two ETH to what the value is now. Uh, in Australian dollars, he's seven dollars before he's rare. <laughs> That's, and that's you're getting his limited. I'm getting approximately <laughs> £3.90. His last sale on limited was in Australian dollars, $1. Yeah, for 52 pence. Exactly. Fact, I'm just going to go buy him right now. You can have mine if you want, to be honest. <laughs> When I, I sold my gallery, when I sold my gallery, he was the one card I couldn't shift on. Funny that. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Right, oh, he's even got a red point. X. What, what did you get, Mark? So, mine was... I thought for sure mine was going to land on Burrito, and I was extremely over the moon with that. And then yeah, it just know. tipped it's over the edge to a whole pineapple. <laughs> yes! Your tongue is going to dissolve by the end of that. <laughs> So I have a couple of questions, right? <laughs> Presumably, I can cut the like skin off the pineapple. I can cut the like hard <laughs> bit around the edge off. No nope, leaves and all. <laughs> leaves and all. And I can core it as well, so I can have like a whole load of rings or something. All right. Yeah, but I you've got to you do can, the coring live. Yeah, oh. I, was, I think you can sh- de-shell it, but you've got to eat it as a whole pineapple. I don't think you can yeah. cut it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You've got to, eat it, you've got to hold like it like an apple, apple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was hoping yeah. I was going to get something I could, like, order on Deliveroo or something, because then I would order it during the podcast, and then when it arrived, I'd invite, okay, deliver- I'd invite the Deliveroo man in to come on the podcast and give me the order. That's a that's a different kind of video, fella. We've not got there mm. yet. Yeah, I had to set up the OnlyFans. We're not. Oh, we're not I haven't got the money for this, yet. sir. How else can I? Pay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Oh, I'll have to. Pay, I'll have to pay you a different way. <laughs> <laughs> also, my washing machine's broke. Yes, so there he is. Already. I love that. Nice, nice. Yeah, I had a. Awesome. I had a probably the fl- the other side of the coin where I was hoping mine stopped and. Thank God it did. I landed myself on a McDonald's Happy Meal, but I was oh so close from back to back sloppy steaks. <laughs> Ooh. What's, I don't know if you've seen now. Talk us through a sloppy steak. Is that so, steak yeah, and water well, or something? <laughs> yeah, Alistair, you explain it. You, it was your brainchild, wasn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll find the clip and I'll send it to you guys. Um, but yeah, basically, it's uh, it's it's just a steak with water poured all over it. Um, it's delicious. Um, <laughs> so, so, so you can cook it how you want and have the steak how you want, but you've just got to chuck a shitload. You've got to douse it with water. Yeah, yeah. Christ. And Anytime we've got some water, footage of Simon doing that. To be honest, I mean, you I'm can sure, you can sure do what you, you like. Can boil a kettle and pour it on. At least you get a warm steak. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Eat steak, but... Hot, wet steak sounds that great. <laughs> sounds like a Friday night. <laughs> Hot, you, wet beef. Um, I did pretty well out of this. I have come up with a succulent Chinese meal. Um, <laughs> so is that, I don't is know that if anyone, charge? if is anyone hasn't, yeah, there you go. You know what it is. <laughs> okay, I didn't know if that <laughs> was just an Australian. Off my penis. <laughs> <laughs> is that just yeah. a choice so... of a Chinese meal of whatever you want? Have you never well, I think so. No, I don't think I've ever seen. Have you never seen this fella getting arrested? What's the charge? I've just linked it to it. Yeah, so I will open it right now, but I will. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Watch that after. My penis. Yeah. So I'm thinking that on the next pod, I have to eat a succulent Chinese meal, and I have to keep my hands off my penis the entire time. I think think that's the hardest (laughs) part. To be fair, yeah, it is. It is very difficult. You two, you two done pretty well out of that. I think. I think us three, as we've done well, but Mark and Aaron. What do you mean? I've got an iconic keeper. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, and when the A League gets on boarded. Exactly. Oh yeah, you are flying. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. you're laughing. I feel like Aaron. You should spin again, just so you got something to eat whilst we're if we're we're all eating as well. I'll spin. I'll spin till I've got food. If you want. That's coming from a man who's eating a whole pineapple. Right, I'm spinning. Yeah, exactly right. If I'm committing to a whole pineapple, you're not getting a limited card. So I, I also have a succulent Chinese meal. So shall I spin to get something different? Yeah, spin yeah. again. Spin again. See, you guys are addicted to the lunch wheel now. Yeah, yeah I actually am as well. I'm going to decide when I was, to choose my meal on Friday. When oh, I was streaming, fuck. I'd made a wheel. Oh yes, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> mayo, mayonnaise, mayonnaise. So when you say a dozen eggs. <laughs> Like I'm, I, don't, I can't even show you it because it's my screen, but I actually have a dozen. A dozen eggs. It's your choice, mate. A dealer's choice on the eggs. You can have them mashed. You can have them fried. You can drink them raw. Drink them. I'll tell you what, mate. I'd be making a twelve Chilled. egg omelette. I think. I know, but I also feel you like can you imagine the cop the, out as well. Can, it's easy to eat can eggs. You pops, the, it? Can you imagine the size of a twelve egg omelette, though? I mean, <laughs> just to go full like segment matrix here so our segment when simon got a dozen eggs was the classic game bob scoofs where you have to put an egg in your mouth say bob scoofs and then put another egg in your mouth say bob scoofs i mean it is copyrighted but we will grant you the license for your next podcast to play the classic (laughs) game of bob scoofs live on pod desperate to watch you play i'm I'm really going to regret this but i will play bob scoofs on the next podcast (laughs) Alistair, I thought you were going to make him say Jeffrey Hammonds. <laughs> that's not a bad shout, but that's a That'd lot longer ridiculous. of a word. You can't say Jeffrey Hammonds with an egg in your mouth. It's impossible. And without touching your penis. So, <laughs> Very true. Bevo cam. <laughs> yeah, I can just fix a carton of eggs in here. Yeah, every time you go to swallow a, an egg, it's just... So, the, just struggling, mate. the next question... Do you have to keep the previous egg in whilst you say Bob's goose? Yeah. I'll send you the clip of Simon doing it. His record is four. I think he got to four, Simon, maybe five. Definitely. He almost died in the process. Whoever our next guest is is going to be fucking baffled at what's going on. I I honestly can't wait to watch you gargle eggs while saying Bob's goose. I'm so excited. (laughs) 
Oh, I should never have questioned the fact that all those four should do it. Well, do you know what? I I was going to ask if there was anything else to talk about, but I don't think we can finish a podcast anywhere else other than the lunch wheel. No. I think it's perfect. I, I think that. I, I just know this is this is the one time that we'll probably get like Nicholas on the next pod or something, and <laughs> Aaron's on there fucking chugging twelve eggs, shouting Jeffrey Hammonds or Bob Scoose. <laughs> Sorry, I'm Nicholas. Before you announce the new MLS cards, can I just crack this egg into my mouth, please? <laughs> Aaron is twelve eggs. Mark oh. is a whole pineapple. So I you, am you know what's even more annoying? Because I've got a photo of me getting the limited card first, he's millimetres away from fish and chips. Like, it <laughs> just ticked over, and I fucking That's love rough, fish, fish and How chips. How far away was I? I think I, I... Yeah, I mean, mine, I was pretty safe. The one that I was ticking over to was a meat pie, so... I was, was sandwiched between... Meat pie all day. I was sandwiched between a burrito and a KFC Zinger box, so I completely <laughs> shit out with the pineapple. Yeah, you really <laughs> fucked up there. I mean, I'd still rather eat a whole pineapple, but yeah, you've got unlucky there. <laughs> that is unluck- honestly, that is probably my favourite thing we've done on the podcast so far. It's, um, <laughs> it's been an it's been an absolute pleasure, boys. Yeah, it has. Thank you. Um, Likewise, I, mean, I don't think we can. I don't think we can thank you enough for getting up at what six, seven o'clock, and eight o'clock your times to uh, down some goon bags with us before you go to work. But it's uh, massively appreciated. Like we said, we'll. <laughs> do it we'll do the flip side and we'll get up at seven o'clock for you whenever you uh whenever you so wish <laughs> absolutely absolutely where, where can people find you if they aren't if, if they aren't aware of so rare down under already yeah um i think youtube's probably the best place to to catch our stuff just because there's a, a bit of a visual element to it um so it's just you youtube care. slash so rare down under <laughs> um <laughs> Oh, we're on Spotify and all that stuff, and Twitter as well. If you want to, like, I don't know, yell at us or abuse us in any way, definitely worth follows just for the uh, the videos. I will say <laughs> that latest that latest post with the uh, Riley Reed with the words over it saying, "Oh fuck, you're going to make me invest." Absolutely <laughs> killed me, by the way. Absolutely <laughs> sent the trigger. The, the 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 content is brilliant. To be fair, so people definitely need to check you out. Thanks, lads. Well, Thanks, boys, guys. I will. Uh, I'll see you next week. We. 12, 12 atomic chicken wings. Beautiful. 12 eggs. Cheers, mates. 12 <laughs> eggs. See you later, boys. Thanks. <laughs>